Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Ruben Murillo, President of the Nevada State Education Association, representing over 40,000 educators statewide. NSEA strongly supports SB 180, the Teach to Achieve and Succeed Act, which would direct IP1 room tax monies to supplement critical education needs like programs for English language learners, special education, STEM, STEAM education, and literacy programs for the successful implementation of Read by Three. In 2008, NSEA was joined by other stakeholder groups and placed in advisory measure, measures on the Clark and Washoe County ballots to room, raise the room tax to supplement public education funding. And after passage of these measures, the collection of over 130,000 signatures to qualify the initiative petition for the ballot, the legislature adopted IP1 into law, increasing the room tax to supplement public education funding to improve the achievement of students and the payment of salaries to attract and retain qualified teachers and other employees. While it was agreed that these monies were used to help balance the budget in the 2009-2011 uh, biennium to avert the worst budget cuts during the recession, a special fund was created to ensure that these funds would be used to supplement public education funding into the future. Unfortunately, during the 2011, 13, and 15 sessions, the legislature passed legislation to use these funds to supplement general funds for required school funding, citing the lingering effects of the recession. So while IP1 now generates $365 million in the biennium, public education, education has not seen a single additional cent from this tax. So while the recession finally behind us, IP1 funds must be put to where they were promised, into the classroom. When IP1 was adopted, Nevada ranked near the bottom of states in per pupil spending. And nearly a decade later, we continue to be ranked near the bottom. Now, despite heroic efforts from the governor and the legislature during the last session to raise revenue for public education, we know that these additional funds only backfilled massive education cuts made during the recession. Now a decade later, Nevada continues to be ranked near the bottom of states in per pupil education funding. The room tax money must be used for what it was initially intended to supplement public education funding. As you have seen already in numerous hearings in education, more funding must be provided to meet the needs of a growing and vastly diverse student population. The restoration of IP1 monies into the DSA and to that uh, to supplement, not to supplant funding, would go a long way towards meeting the unmet needs in public education including the funding of special education students, English language learners, and at-risk pupils that have been prioritized for additional funding with the com contemplation of weighted funding formula. The economic crisis has passed, but we still have a crisis in our classrooms. It's time to do what's right for our kids by passing SB 180 and restoring IP1 tax monies to their original intended use. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Murillo? Senator Kefer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Murillo, I indicate the IP1 um, money is going to generate $365 million over the upcoming biennium, or is that the current biennium? Upcoming biennium. Upcoming biennium. I mean, do you not consider new money that's been put into Zoom schools, victory schools, um, you know, Nevada Ready 21, teacher incentives, peer support um, and review? professional development, all of those things, additional money that we've put into education over the past couple of years? Oh, those are very Ruben Murillo, for the record. Yes, absolutely, those are very critical, and those have been uh, used to help address critical needs in our area. However, during the course of this legislative session so far, we've heard of the need of additional funds, for example, the weighted funded formula. Uh, the number of $200 million was passed, was, was tossed around last week, and actually I believe uh, the district and other groups are looking for $600 million. Yeah, the bills of like $1.4 billion. Right, yeah. right. But I'm talking about what, was, uh, what I heard at committees and what we've heard discussing. So uh, if it's $1.3 billion, then somewhere along the way we have to start looking for monies to reach that goal. And in my mind, this money would be a really good start to take a look at the weighted funding formula which we know that uh, across the state needs to be addressed. And to me, this is a great start in the right direction. Right, but your testimony was that we had not spent any additional money on education, and that's just not true. No. If that was – oh, sorry, Ruben Real for the record. If that was my uh, – if you took it that way, that was not my intention. I think I mentioned in here that we were very 
uh, supportive of the governor when the tax revenues were passed last time. That, I do remember reading that in here. And so we recognize that monies have been put into education, but there still needs to be additional funding for example, weighted fund and formula. Yeah, but this is also just a mechanical issue. This isn't about more money. There's no more money in this bill. This is a mechanical issue of what a budget account we spend it out of, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Mr. Daly? Chair Woodhouse, uh, committee members, thank you for being here bright and early after another late night. Uh, Chris Daly, Nevada State Education Association. NSEA has been working for over 100 years to ensure a high quality public education for every Nevada student. Uh, as our president, uh, Mario, stated, NSEA supports SB 180, Teach to Achieve and Succeed, uh, to provide direction on how to spend IB1 room tax monies to improve student achievement. But I'll tell you, having watched a lot of hearings here uh, over the first seven weeks of this session, uh, it's clear to me at least that there's no shortage of good ideas about how to improve public education and student achievement. Here in the Senate alone, you have bills on Zoom schools, computer education and technology, special education, financial literacy, school gardens, STEM and STEAM education, school libraries, and of course, the weighted funding formula. All great ideas, all will help public education all come with a price tag and currently aren't funded. That last one, weighted funding formula, as Senator Key Kaffer pointed out, with a really big price tag. The magic in this hearing really is not in the details of the bill, SB 180. It's in the big picture of public education funding. Senators, there's $365 million out there right now that should be going to improve public education. Given the importance of this issue, I actually put on a tie today. This is my $365 million tie. Comes on when the items go, uh, go up. Um, but I also think that uh, a little bit of a deeper dive into the history and the genesis of uh, IP1 and these monies, I think, is warranted. Um, I did have a, a very long uh, phone conversation with uh, our previous uh, president, uh, uh, Lynn uh, Varney, who wanted to be here this morning, but actually uh, is sick. Um, but we uh, reviewed the history that she so intimately, and I think some of uh, you here uh, probably remember. Back in 2007, when public education funding was uh, in a desperate situation, NSEA filed uh, a gaming tax measure to raise money for public schools, and we began collecting signatures on that measure. However, before we submitted the signatures, that following year, uh, Lynn was approached by Steve and Elaine Wynn. Uh, they uh, worked together uh, to uh, put uh, the IP1 framework uh, together and created the Committee for Advancement of Education in Nevada. This coalition included NSEA, Wynn, Harris, uh, and Station Casinos. Working with uh, these coalition partners, NSEA went out to collect signatures across Nevada to qualify uh, the framework for IP1 uh, for the ballot. Uh, while collecting over 130,000 signatures, uh, we also had advisory measures placed on the Clark and Washoe County ballots. In November of 2008, both, these, both, both of these measures uh, passed uh, overwhelmingly with 66% support in Clark and 57% support uh, in Washoe. As you know, after the collection of the signatures on the statutory measure, the legislature had 40 days to enact the petition into law, otherwise it would have gone to the ballot. Uh, speaking in front of the assembly at the first hearing on IP1, uh, President uh, Lynn Varney set the tone, and I quote, the initiative petition will provide a desperately needed dedicated source of revenue for our K-12 public education system. I'm sure I don't need to tell you about the problems we face, about the overcrowded classrooms, the educators who can't pay their mortgage or rent, the number of classes that are taught by substitutes because we are unable to recruit qualified permanent teachers. The voters of Nevada have spoken and have done so with a firm and decisive voice. The initiative petition you are considering is before you because over 130,000 Nevadans have demanded you act by signing the petition. They have sent you a message that enough is enough, that it is the time to begin the process 
of making K-12 public education a priority, end quote. But as we now know, the recession was deep and it lingered uh, on in Nevada for years. Every subsequent session, 2011, 2013, and again in 2015, IP1 monies were used to supplant general fund dollars in the DSA, freeing up an equivalent amount of money to help in other areas of the budget. During these years, NSCA did not give up on education funding. In 2014, we launched the Education Initiative to enact a margins tax on businesses with revenues over a million dollars. Uh, I can hear my colleagues covering their ears right now because we don't like to talk too much about TEI in public anymore because of uh, that brutal result, uh, you know, in the end. However, I feel it's important to point out that during the campaign, the most salient argument against TEI was that Nevada only a few years earlier had passed a room tax for public education and the legislature took that money away from our schools. They went on. How can we trust that the legislature wouldn't just take the monies from a business tax? to fund other priorities or their pet projects. And honestly, we had no good response to this critique in that campaign, which brings me to today in the 2017 session. When it comes to funding education, Nevada has been running in place. Through the chair to Senator Keekeffer, uh, you're correct. There have been a lot of efforts uh, to put funds into the public education system, uh, but we have to keep in mind there were drastic cuts to public education like uh, all other public services during the recession. Nevada has been running in place. The commerce tax uh, that we reference, it basically got public education back uh, to pre-recession levels. So while, as President Maria pointed out, uh, I think we ranked 49th in per pupil public education funding in 2007, I think we might have moved up a spot or two. Um, but we still rank near the bottom of states in pure people funding uh, for schools. This year, even with targeted additions to important education programs like Zoom and Victory Schools, special education, we know that total education funding only goes up about $150 per pupil in the governor's proposed budget. That doesn't even keep up with the increasing costs of doing business, not to mention all of the other programs that we want to try and fund to improve our schools. Public education in Nevada needs a new infusion of cash. Unfortunately, there's no other way around it. So there's no doubt that the $365 million generated by the IP1 room tax uh, should be used for what was initially intended, what the voters approved, to fund our schools. We know how to improve our schools and ensure that every kid has a quality education. We have no shortage of good ideas, but it always comes down to a question of resources, which is really a question of political will. With this existing law, passed in 2009, amended every two years, but sunsetted at the end uh, of the biennium, if we do nothing, so the beauty of this one, if we do nothing, if a majority of this committee decides not to redirect these monies back into the general fund, these monies will be available for public education. We ask that you strongly consider doing that. Thank you very much.